This was the exam question that, that David sent me. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna pass, but I'll, I'll give it my, my best shot. So uh, just maybe a little few words around THET, just to begin with. Some of you will be familiar with us, some less so. Um, that's our vision, a world where everyone has access to healthcare, but we all know that, well, but it never say, ceases to, to surprise me and shock me that that stat, one in seven people will never see a qualified health worker in their lives. So THET's been working uh, for the last 30 years, actually, trying to contribute towards um, the human resources for health uh, uh, problem, uh, working to, uh, um, through partnerships. So we've been promoting the, the health partnership approach uh, for, for, for the last 30 years. Uh, as we've been hearing, universities, professional associations, hospitals, connecting up with our counterparts in low and middle income countries. That's what we mean by health partnerships. Um, you know, partnership's one of those terms, isn't it? Um, this is what, this is what we, we, we mean. Um, key terms, I think that third line, co-development, uh, and then the last as well, reciprocal learning and mutual benefits, and it's been great hearing some of the, uh, this, this language emerging throughout the day, and you know, we can sort of reflect on that uh, a little later, actually. Uh, just quickly, there's lots of partnerships in the UK. I should mention we're a UK charity. Um, so the light uh, grey is, is, is uh, 1 to 10 partnerships. The, uh, the blue is uh, 10 to 100 partnerships, and that big orange Greater London section is, is, is more than 100 partnerships. A lot's happening uh, over, over the last uh, 30 years. We manage programmes uh, in a number of countries. It's fascinating to hear about um, um, uh, the presentations from Zambia uh, and, uh, and, and Uganda and elsewhere. Uh, so lots of uh, on, on the ground sort of experience. Um, we also, and this is probably one of the areas where we're, we're most uh, um, you know, well known for our grant management. So this health partnership scheme, which ran from 2011 through to spring next year, uh, is, is one, one of the big ones that we've been uh, working on. I'll talk uh, uh, briefly about that. But also perhaps less known, working with uh, corporates like Johnson & Johnson and the Africa Grants Program. Again, um, um, dispersing grants, but also supporting partnerships to deliver projects and, and measure uh, for, with measurable change. Then more recently with the Department of Health and Social Care. So a new form of ODA, uh, Overseas Development Assistance. Um, so it's not all going from the Department for International Development now in the UK. Some of it's going through other departments. This is via the Fleming Fund uh, and the Commonwealth Partnerships for Antimicrobial Stewardship. That's just a few numbers. Um, I'm not sure if my uh, predecessors have, have, have presented in the past, but this, this, is, <laughs> this is the latest numbers from Health Partnership Scheme. Quite substantial. Um, so we're facilitating, we're not doing the training, we're facilitating people like you and, and partnerships, hospitals, professional associations, universities, and over 84,000 health workers have been trained over the lifetime of health partnership scheme. I mean, you can see the, the, the other numbers there, quite, quite significant. And then finally, and this is what I'm trying to get my, to my exam question, if you like, is getting into this area of policy advocacy and research, and that's kind of what I, I focus on, and this is, what we've been doing in terms of learning and reflecting uh, around what, uh, what the benefits might be uh, to the UK health system and some, some points around what we've learned from our approach. Um, we've, in our mutual interest, I'm glad to saw that phrase up in the, the previous, um, uh, uh, previous uh, presentation, um, we, we, we published a report uh, indeed entitled that. We're very much engaging with the, the narrative in Whitehall uh, around national interest um, and, uh, but we think we have something interesting to say about the partnership approach and mutuality. Uh, so we're positively engaging uh, with the current uh, narrative uh, in the UK, uh, but also striking, trying to strike this balance. You know, if there's too much emphasis on self-interest, then this is what we, we uh, the, the three bullets up on screen uh, are, are, are the risks that we face. We also took the opportunity in that report uh, to listen uh, uh, to Southern partners uh, and, uh, and ask them about what they think about when they think about health partnerships, the partnership approach. Um, and some of it was quite sober um, uh, reading uh, and listening. Um, so addressing country need. That second quote is, uh, well, the, the first quote rather, the biggest <coughs> challenge was that the core aim for the project was not, not set by us, but imposed on us by a UK partner. Uh, this came to haunt us. So, you know, strong language. And again, that second quote. Things are, and again, these are issues that these are issues perhaps that we've you know have, uh, we've touched on earlier uh, today. Transparency. Again, that quote. Lack of transparency in the way grant resources are used leaves us feeling used. Um, and ownership. Again, this is a, a recurring through the theme throughout the day. Subcontractors. So you know, lots of you know, lots of uh, sobering, sobering words. 
and a reality check, again, communications issues. So what we've done uh, is uh, develop our own principles of partnership, uh, and this is our attempt at quality improvement. Um, so uh, you can see up on screen, uh, I hope you can see up on screen the, the, the eight principles, strategic, harmonized and aligned, effective and sustainable, spectral and reciprocal, organized and accountable, responsible, flexible, resourceful and innovative and committed to joint learning. So, you know, everybody's got the principles. Beneath them are arrays of hallmarks of good practice and, and, and tools and practical resources to, to help uh, partnerships um, uh, think through uh, what they mean uh, uh, when it comes to quality and their approach. And we hope that with the TPI, the Twinning Partnerships for Improvement Methodology, uh, and the Esther Alliance Effect Tool, they can be complement one another uh, when it comes to uh, improving quality in partnerships. So, the second question, uh, do health partnerships benefit healthcare in the UK? Um, so, just a word of note, you know, it's 10 years on actually since Nigel Chris published Global Health Partnerships. It's a very fuzzy uh, image. But I think a couple of things there, that was one of the, one of the reports that, that uh, really championed this health partnership approach. Uh, in, in terms of development, and also the language. I not necessarily coin some of the terms up on screen there, but uh, it certainly did popularize some, some of us a reframing of, of how, we, how we think and how we act. Um, benefits, you can't mention benefits without barriers, and there's been you know, a number of uh, interesting barriers uh, raised. We, we did some work at the Academy of Medical Royal College and uh, came up with that analysis around, around barriers. We've been working on trying to address some of them with various uh, agencies back in the UK. Um, but benefits, um, a good report, Improving Health at Home and Abroad, uh, from the All Party Parliamentary Group on Global Health, summed up the benefits quite nicely in that, in that on the right-hand side of the screen. The purposes of my, my few minutes today, I'm not going to focus on benefits to countries, although, of course, that's what makes FET tick and what makes us all tick. Um, and I'm not going to focus on international relationships, but that's really interesting in terms of you know, what's happening uh, over the sea. But mainly I'm going to focus on two, sharing innovation, and three, leadership development. Again, echoing, and hopefully uh, I'm uh, building on um, others' uh, comments. So benefits, up on the screen there is an interesting example of uh, what you might term frugal innovation, the Arbutus drill cover system. So you just have a, um, you know, a drill that you'd find in your, in your garden shed or in your tool, tool um, uh, cupboard, but uh, then it has the, the cover on it. And you can see that the, which makes it, um, uh, an actual you know, surgical device. And you can see that the bullets up on screen, fascinating uh, amounts in terms of cost savings, in terms of its safety and usability, and the fact that it would meet all standards. So just um, checking in with the, uh, the guys behind that recently, they're suggesting that they're actually coming up against a barrier around those European uh, regulation. Uh, it meets the regulatory requirements, but the costs apparently are prohibitively expensive. So they're struggling with that in terms of bringing it back to Europe or, or indeed the UK. We've been doing a little bit of work on, uh, with Imperial College, actually, on so-called reverse innovation. Uh, we asked them to uh, speak to all the hundreds of partnerships and ask the partnership practitioners, uh, people like yourselves, you know, have you witnessed good ideas, innovations, be they in service change, be they technical innovations when you've been practicing in, in, in resource-poor settings? Uh, over half of them said, yes, we have. Uh, less than half of that uh, said they'd attempted to, uh, to make those changes back in the UK health system, and only one had actually been successful uh, in, in introducing uh, a service back in the UK based on that good idea. So there's lots of interesting points around that. Uh, leadership, again, sort of echoing uh, hopefully others, and, and leadership in some ways is a sort of proxy for the, the individual change, the individual um, uh, uh, improvement. Uh, we've got the, the head man at Health Education <coughs> England talking, talking there. Uh, Lots of great examples through health partnership scheme of, of system-wide uh, leadership programs, doctors no, and uh, non-clinicians, managers, volunteering for extended period of times in resource poor settings using things like the NHS leadership competency framework uh, to measure their uh, improvement in their competencies along with the counterparts that they're, uh, they're working, working alongside in places like Cambodia, um, South Africa and Kenya. Uh, and then um, Dr. Garrett, I think, um, it's great to, uh, uh, to, to see you, uh, somebody actually using this. We, we, uh, we, we've been working on this operational sort of policy barriers as well. And this is one of the tools that we worked with Health Education England on. So this is uh, really trying to uh, uh, provide everyone uh, with the opportunity to reflect and to gather evidence when they're working overseas, bring it back to the, the workplace uh, in the high income country uh, and present back uh, the appraisals uh, to perhaps skeptical line managers that have not just been on a holiday. Uh, actually, here is the evidence of, of how they've improved as professionals. 
Um, so you might say, okay, so what? Individual change. Uh, but so with this um, guidance from, from, from DH, DFID, NHS Confederation, which we co-wrote, really interesting uh, piece of research in that, which takes on, on to the next step. So what they did is do a, a literature review on, on benefits to, to UK partners. So again, they went through the, the individual change um, and uh, noted, yep, it, it looks like there's a lot of evidence there. But, and then they mapped those individual competencies onto uh, up on the screen then, sort of at the right-hand side, sort of domains of, of, of organisational change, in theory. So that was quite an interesting sort of piece of, uh, sort of heavy lifting sort of, uh, from the academic uh, side of things. So you might again say, so what? Um, so the, the, this is one piece of research that we're familiar with. Uh, it's called the MOVE Project. Uh, it's going through Salford University, uh, again funded by Health Education England. Uh, and what they're trying to do uh, is, is to take, uh, is to study uh, cohorts of UK health workers who are volunteering uh, and, uh, and then following them through to when they return, getting a sense of how they're individually changing, but also how they're trying to change service uh, back, in, back in the UK. Uh, and then just finally, um, there's a really good series in Globalisation and Health, which is a peer-reviewed journal, uh, and there was uh, a great series on health partnerships, and there's loads and loads of really interesting papers on what everybody else is doing in terms of health partnerships, both clinically, but also thinking about quality improvement, um, thinking about um, a, a number of, sort of domains, if you like. And I think probably some of you in the room are probably published in this, this journal, so uh, but I do uh, commend it highly.